Got milk? Not anymore. Everything is going just as I planned. Soon the entire world will be without dairy milk. No butter on toast, no ice cream, no cheddar cheese, and nothing but dry cereal. Nothing can stop me now. <laughs> Somewhere over the Mediterranean Sea. Would you like our Italian entree, sir? No, thanks. It gives me hives. Our vegetarian dinner, then? Nope. Gives me the vapors. Then may I recommend the Greek plate? It's delicious. All right, if you insist. Enjoy. It's good to see you, Agent Fox. Ah, Monkey Penny. Now this is a real TV dinner. Right. Yesterday, our spy operatives discovered the factories and offices of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated abandoned and drained of milk. Soon, the entire world's remaining milk reserves will be depleted. The idea of eating dry breakfast cereal is pretty hard to swallow. Yes, it is. Here's the only clue we have. Feta cheese. A low grade, too. Spy operatives took that picture in the office of Mr. Howard Hugh Heffer Utterly III. President and CEO of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated. Exactly. We presume he has valuable information on the dairy crisis. The only available picture of him is hidden in your mashed potatoes. Finding Utterly is your top priority. He shouldn't be hard to spot. The feta cheese samples found in Utterly's office have been traced back to the island of Acidophilus. Your plane will be flying over the island any minute now. I've already set up the mobile command center where you'll rendezvous with me and later on with Quack. The entrance code is in your fortune cookie. Any questions? No, I'm on my way. Good. Monkey Penny, out. I wish I hadn't left my parachute in my other tuxedo. Maybe one of my special spy gadgets will help me. I wonder which one I should pick. Tanks, but no tanks. I don't think I can have my cake and eat it too. What good is this without helium? Hmm. If you thought that was impressive, you should have seen the one that got away. Hmm. So this is the sleepy little Greek island of Acidophilus. I seem to have arrived unfashionably early, since nothing seems to be open. I should meet up with Monkey Penny at the Mobile Command Center. It says, Greek Cantina. The door's locked. The door's locked. I guess the cantina doesn't serve breakfast. Well, I have to say that's the first time I've ever been grateful I ate the airplane meat. Looks like it's closed. Five 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 two two nine zero. How fortunate that Monkey Penny gave me this entrance code.
Hello, you've reached the offices of Amalgamated Mood Juice Incorporated. Our staff is a little tied up right now, so we'll have to get back to you as soon as we're rescued. I'd better try another number. Five 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 two two nine zero. Hello, Spycor Mobile Command Center. Penny, I've got your number. Now that's a person-to-person -person phone call. Glad you could drop in, Spy Fox. Hello, Monkey. That's Monkey Penny. So what do you think of Skycorp's new Greek Island Mobile Command Center? Impressive. Disguising it as a half-buried boat in the middle of the town square was a stroke of genius. Nobody would ever notice that. That was Professor Quack's idea. Where is Quack? Oh, he'll be here soon to refill the spy gadget vending machine. In the meantime, we sent a couple of things ahead for your mission. Good, because a spy without a gadget is like a shopping cart without a broken wheel. How apt. Now pay attention. This is Greek money. It's called drachmas. You may need to buy a few things around here on the island. And this is a... A toothbrush. And I sure could use one after that airplane meal. Don't put that in your mouth. It's not a regular toothbrush. It's a special laser toothbrush. Let me show you how it works. You hold the laser toothbrush, apply the minty fresh laser gel, push the button, then you can use it to cut through really thick steel. Hmm, I guess that's one way to fight cavities. So, do we have any idea where Mr. Utterly is being held? No solid evidence yet, but you might want to check out that feta factory down by the docks. Feta factory, huh? I thought I smelled something suspicious. If I take the Asti Spumoni out for a little spin... Sorry, Fox. Quack hasn't had a chance to fix it since you cracked it up escaping from the evil Dr. Maybe. My spy watch is beeping. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox here. Hi, Spy Fox. Remember, you can call me via your spy watch anytime for help and information. Just press the mobile command button. Will do. Spy Fox, out. Uh-oh. Normally, I would karate chop my way right through a door. But this one seems to be made of solid steel. The laser toothbrush makes impervious steel doors pervious. Now that's a big side of beef. No buts about it. That's Mr. Utterly, all right. And he's dangling over a pool of piranha. Now the question is, how am I going to get his rump roast down from there? Hmm, this must be the temperature control for this pool of piranhas. Kind of an odd fixture for a feta cheese factory. The piranha pool seems to be getting colder. The little beasties seem to be slowing down. Hmm, fish on ice. That should hold them. Now for Mr. Utterly. Oh, 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 oh,
You saved me. Thank you, Mr. Um. Oh, uh, Fox. Spy Fox. Routine rescue, really? Now I need to get you to our mobile command center for a debriefing. Good. I need to change my pants. <laughs> You've got to stop him, Mr. Fox. All right. Just calm down, Mr. Utterly. Why don't you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? Well, it all started as a typical day at the office. When you're as important as I am, you're constantly fielding international cattle calls and reviewing grazing reports. Yep, you have to stay pretty sharp in the dairy biz. So, when William the Kid Thugs made their appearance, I immediately snapped into action. There were dozens of them. I fought them hoof and nail. Pow, 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 I did. My whole body's a weapon. Then suddenly, I smelled something revolting. It could only be one thing. Feta cheese! cheese. cheese. The stink was so overwhelming that I nearly passed out. Taking advantage of my momentary asphyxiation, Kidnappers jumped me and then forced me into a smelly dark bag. They whisked me away to Kid's Secret Island Fortress. It was just so humiliating being bagged up like a... like a piece of beef. But were you able to learn anything about what William the Kid is up to? Well, thanks to a little bovine ingenuity on my part, I picked a few things up. Kid's demented scheme for gaining worldwide domination is run by a front company called Nectar of the Goats Corporation. He has a five-part master plan. First, capture all the dairy cows in the world. As you know, he's already done that. Second, he built that milky weapon of destruction inside his secret fortress. Third, use this milky weapon of destruction to flood the capital with none too fresh dairy milk. Fourth, Frame all the poor dairy cows for this heinous crime. Fifth, take over the entire dairy world. Bye, Fox. Someone needs to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Hmm, sounds challenging. I need to find that secret fortress and disarm that milky weapon of destruction. Oh, I almost forgot. When William the Kid's back was turned, I swiped the secret code that turns the milky weapon of destruction off. Good going. Where is it? Uh, well, I had to swallow the code before I could read it so it wouldn't be discovered. Can you believe it? I find the whole thing a little hard to swallow. We need to figure out a way to get a look at that code. Someone needs to find that secret fortress and stop William the Kid. X-ray gum. How does this work, Professor Quack? Ah, oh, that's my new and improved beef flavor X-ray gum. I'll explain how it works. You take a stick out, put it up against something beefy, move it around, and then you can see the yucky stuff inside. The best part of all is, when you're done, you can chew the gum. It actually has a very refreshing, beefy flavor. You know, four out of five dentists prefer X-ray gum for their patients who need X-rays. A duck needs his fiber. What's in this egg-shaped container, Professor Quack? This is a little gadget I call the Spy Putty. What you do is open the cute little egg container and spread the putty on whatever you want to make a copy of. Press down and then peel the putty off. You have a perfect copy. Hmm, that looks rather silly. I know what you're thinking. You think that the spy putty looks a lot like that silly stuff they sell in toy stores. What you don't know is that I thought of it first. Those duplicitous duplicators stole my idea. That's the X-ray gum.
Now, if you don't mind, Mr. Utterly, I'm going to need to use this x-ray gum to take a look at those four stomachs of yours. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Because I get kind of dizzy when I think about pain. In fact, just saying the word pain makes me want to... Oh. Professor Quack, your x-ray gum works perfectly. I can see everything inside Mr. Utterly's gut. I found the note. I'll be able to disarm that milky weapon of destruction with that key. I just need to find it, then figure out where to place it. If I had a wrench in me, I would wretch. the jar of trinkets, but I'm wondering if you have them in cans. It's uncanny that you would ask me that, because just this morning I ordered some. Unfortunately, they won't be here till next week. Excuse me, are you the owner of this boat? I'm James T. Drydock, captain of the SS Winterprize. Pleased to meet you. My name's Fox. Spy Fox. Is this rickety old boat of yours seaworthy? 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 Of course she's seaworthy. The question is not whether she's seaworthy, matey, but rather whether you're worthy of the sea. I see. So, Captain, do you think you could take me out for a little boat ride? I'd love to, but there's just one problem. I can't go anywhere without my lucky charm. Your lucky charm? Aye, matey. <coughs> because that there is the sea, the final frontier. And my voyages on the SS Winterprise, on a 25-year mission to seek out new sea life and new civilizations, I boldly went where no raccoon has gone before. But without my lucky charm, it would be way too risky. I can't chance it. I can gather information about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm with this. That's quite a nice little toy boat you got there. Is it yours? Oh, yes, sir. And that is why I'm standing out here at this podium on this filthy, seagull-stained dock talking to a sophisticated wannabe like you. So, it's not your boat? No. It belongs to my boss. Pardon me, sir, but just where do you think you're going? On board. Sir, you are obviously making a little joke. No one but no one is allowed to go on board the SS Deadweight without a gold-edged, wax-sealed, expensively embossed, handwritten invitation. And do you have one of these, sir? Not as such. Then I'm afraid, sir, that you should make like a plane in the Bermuda Triangle and get lost. I can gather information about the deck party with this. So, what's a jar of trinkets going for these days? Uh, normally, sir, they're 20 drachmas, but for you, how about 50? Sounds good to me. I'll take it. There you go, sir. Why, thank you. I noticed that there was a party going on down on that big ship at the docks. But I understand you can only go if you were invited. That is true. In fact, I am going as soon as I get off work. Oh, so you got an invitation. I certainly did. It is really a fancy schmancy one, too. Would you like to look at it? Why, yes. I would love to look at it.
do you know anything about the lucky charm poor Captain Drydock lost? I know nothing of any importance pertaining to this supposed lucky charm of which you speak, sir. I know that Drydock spends a lot of time in the cantina, however. Great. My life needs a little direction right now. I think I'll buy that steering wheel. Let me wrap that up for you. Ah! Ah! Oh, forget it. Oh, I almost forgot. This is not just the local trinket emporium. It is also this island's maritime museum. And I'm not allowed to let anyone touch the exhibits. I can't... Hi, honey. Welcome to the cantina. I'm Bee Bear. If there's anything I can get you, sugar, like, for example, sugar, you just let me know, all right? Thanks, B. Secret sauce may cause drowsiness in alligators. Beet bliss. It smells funny. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm? Oh, that was a night to remember. Elaborate, please. Captain Drydock dared to play Go Fish with Mr. Big Pig. It's ugly when egos get crushed over a game of Go Fish. Captain Drydock hasn't shown his face in here since. I see. Drydock lost the charm in a game of Go Fish. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his missing lucky charm? <laughs> Pearl Sap lost it in a particularly tense game of Go Fish. Oh, really? So this is the lucky charm then? Hmm, yes. And I won't give it up easily. And you know that Go Fish is my game. Greetings. Interested in a little game of Go Fish, Mr. Fox? Spy Fox. I've been known to play Go Fish from time to time, and you are? Artemis J. Big Pig. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. What do you say we make this game a little more interesting? Would you care to play with some trinkets? I just happen to have a whole jar of trinkets. <laughs> Excellent, then. I like a fox who is willing to play for trinkets with a pig who likes to play Go Fish for trinkets. Place your trinkets on the table, and we'll get started. So, oh, you like playing for trinkets, eh? All right, I'm game. Here's my trinket. Let's play. That's a lovely trinket you have there, sir. I'll play with this one. That's a charming little charm you have there. What? This old trinket? Merely a worthless bobble. I had the pleasure of winning in an intriguing go fish match several weeks ago. Now I can talk to Mr. Big Pig about some of the folks I've met on the island. Perhaps we could work out a deal regarding this lucky charm. <laughs> An interesting proposition, little fox. You know the name of my game. Yes, I do. It's Go Fish, sir. May I warn you that I made it to the state Go Fish Championship as a youngster. <laughs> Perhaps we could work out a deal regarding this lucky charm. <laughs> An interesting proposition, little box. You know the name of my game. Yes, I do. It's Go Fish, sir. May I warn you that I made it to the state Go Fish Championship as a youngster. <laughs> Got any sevens? No, sir. Go Fish. Got any eights? Got any aces? Nope. Go fish. Got any fives? <laughs> Go fish. Hmm. Got any tens? I thought you said you were good at this game. Go fish. Got any fours? Go fish, sir. I've always been lucky when it comes to Go Fish. Got any twos? Not a one, sir. Go Fish. Got any 
King. Go fish. Got any threes? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any twos? Got any nines? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any tens? What a fun game this is. Got any sevens? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any sixes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any nines? Got any jacks? <laughs> go fish. Got any queens? Got any aces? Nope. Go fish. Got any fours? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any fives? Got any queens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any tens? No, sir. Go fish. Got any jacks? Got any sixes? Go fish. Got any threes? Go fish, sir. Got any eights? Nice try, but you need to go fish. <laughs> I hope you are not easily discouraged, sir. Got any jacks? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any nines? <laughs> Go fish. Hmm, got any ten? Got any kings? Go fish. Got any sixes? Got any nines? Go fish, sir. Got any twos? Go fish. Got any sevens? No, sir. Go fish. Got any eights? Go fish. I must apologize, sir. I am rather good at this game. <laughs> Got any kings? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any jacks? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any aces? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any threes? Go fish, Mr. Fox. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any jacks? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Got any eights? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any sevens? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any fours? My match made in heaven, sir. Got any twos? Nope. Go fish. Got any aces? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any kings? What a fun game this is. This suits me just fine. Got any sixes? No, sir. Go fish. That's one set of cards taken care of. Hmm. Got any tens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Ah, how delightful. That gives me a suit, sir. Got any twos? Go fish. Got any sevens? <laughs> go fish. Got any sixes? And that makes a set, sir. Got any eights? Ah, yes. Another one for me, sir. 
Got any tools? Nope. Go fish. Ah, how delightful. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. I win. Another game? It will only cost you a trinket. So you possess this elusive lucky charm. Do you realize that Captain Drydock is virtually paralyzed without it? <laughs> what kind of a seafarer relies on silly trinkets for courage? Apparently the salty squirrel kind does. This is a fun card game. Shall we play again? If you wish to, but I must warn you, sir. This time I'm not going to hold back. I love this game. Got any nines? Got any jacks? What a fun game this is. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any king? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any queens? Go fish, sir. Got any aces? Go fish. Got any sixes? Got any jacks? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any threes? Go fish. Got any aces? A card. Thank you so much. Got any nines? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any twos? Nope. Go fish. Got any sevens? Go fish, sir. This suits me just fine. Got any aces? Got any twos? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any sixes? <laughs> go fish. Got any fives? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any jacks? No, sir. Go fish. Got any eights? Go fish. Got any queens? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any sixes? And that makes a set, sir. Got any threes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any kings? Got any jacks? <laughs> go fish. Got any sevens? Got any fives? Go fish. Got any fours? No, sir. Go fish. Got any queens? Got any aces? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any eights? Got any kings? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any sevens? Nope. Go fish. Got any fours? Go fish, sir. Got any twos? Go fish. Got any fives? Got any eights? No, sir. Go fish. Got any fours? Ah, yes. Another one for me, sir. Got any threes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. I must apologize, sir. I am rather good at this game. Mm -hmm. Got any aces? That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any jacks? Go fish, sir. 
got any sevens? <laughs> I hope you are not easily discouraged, sir. Got any threes? Go fish. Got any fives? A card. Thank you so much. Got any eights? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any queens? Nope. Go fish. Got any kings? What a fun game this is. I love this game. Got any jacks? <laughs> go fish. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fives? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any threes? Go fish. Ah, how delightful. Got any queens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any eights? No, sir. Go fish. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fives? Ah, how delightful. That gives me a suit, sir. Got any threes? Nope, go fish. A match made in heaven, sir. Got any eight? Not a one, sir. Go fish. I love this game. So close, yet so far. So you possess this elusive lucky charm. Do you realize that Captain Drydock is virtually paralyzed without it? <laughs> what kind of a seafarer relies on silly trinkets for curry? Apparently the salty squirrel kind does. You may be very shrewd player, sir but I hope you don't mind if I hog all the winnings. <laughs> that lucky charm sure meant a lot to Captain Drydock. Well, then, sir, he was a fool to play with it against me. Everyone knows I never lose. So close, yet so far. to leave such a challenging opponent, but I have some bigger fish to catch right now. Do you mind if I leave my jar of trinkets here? Go right ahead, sir. Come back any time. Some trinkets? I just happen to have a whole jar of trinkets. <laughs> Excellent then. I like a fox who is willing to play for trinkets with a pig who likes to play go fish for trinkets. Place your trinkets on the table and we'll get started. This is a fun card game. Shall we play again? If you wish to, but I must warn you, sir. This time I'm not going to hold back. Got any fours? Go fish, sir. Got any eights? Go fish. Got any 
got any twos? Got any nines? Got any kings? No, sir. Go fish. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fours? <laughs> go fish. Got any sevens? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any jacks? Got any queens? Got any aces? Got any eights? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any threes? Got any jacks? Go fish. Ah, how delightful. That gives me a suit, sir. Got any nines? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any aces? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, sir. Hmm, got any tens? Got any threes? Nope, go fish. Ah, how delightful. Got any eights? Hmm, got any tens? Go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any kings? Hmm, got any tens? Nope, go fish. Got any jacks? Got any fours? <laughs> go fish. Got any twos? Got any aces? Go fish. Got any nines? No, sir. Go fish. Got any fours? Ah, yes. Another one for me, sir. Got any threes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any eights? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any seven? Hmm, got any tens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any nines? No, sir. Go fish. Got any fives? Nope, go fish. Got any nines? <laughs> go fish. Got any sixes? Got any fives? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any twos? I love this game. Got any nines? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any sixes? Go fish. Gad, <laughs> I'm good. Got any aces? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any eights? Go fish, sir. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fives? Go fish. Got any nines? <laughs> go fish. Got any sixes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any threes? I'll just take those off your hands. This suits me just fine. Got any nines? A card. Thank you so much. That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any eights? Go fish, Mr. Fox. 
I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. I love this game. I win. Oh, that's right. You never lose. There's a first time for everything, Mr. Big Pig. Why don't we really raise the stakes on this game and play for Captain Drydock's lucky charm? Very well, sir, if you insist. Now I can talk to Mr. Big Pig about some of the folks I've met on the island. So you possess this elusive lucky charm. Do you realize... Got any threes? No fish, sir. Got any aces? Got any fives? Got any sixes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any kings? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any threes? Got any jacks? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any sixes? A card. Thank you so much. Got any tens? No, sir. Go fish. Got any sevens? Go fish. Got any jacks? Got any fours? A card. Thank you so much. Got any nines? Got any kings? Go fish, sir. Got any fives? Go fish. Got any aces? I'll just take those off your hands. Got any jacks? <laughs> go fish. I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. This suits me just fine. Got any nines? No, sir. Go fish. Got any sevens? Got any twos? Nope. Go fish. Got any aces? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any threes? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any eights? Nope, go fish. Got any twos? What a fun game this is. Got any aces? <laughs> Go fish. Hmm, got any ten? Got any eights? Go fish. Got any nines? Go fish, Mr. Fox. Got any queens? Got any fives? I thought you said you were good at this game. Go fish. Got any aces? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any kings? Got any queens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Ah, how delightful. Got any eights? Go fish. Got any tens? I'll just take those off your hands. I love this game. Got any aces? That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any fours? No, sir. Go fish. Got any queens? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any fives? I'll just take those off your hands. I love this game. Got any twos? No fish, sir. Got any sevens? I thought you said you were good at this game. Go fish. Got any nines? 
<laughs> Go fish. Got any sixes? And that makes a set, sir. Got any queens? Nope. Go fish. Got any twos? No, sir. Go fish. Got any eights? Nice try, but you need to go fish. Got any kings? I've always been lucky when it comes to go fish. Got any fours? Not a one, sir. Go fish. Got any sevens? Nope. Go fish. Got any threes? I'll just take those off your hands. This suits me just fine. Got any twos? A card. Thank you so much. That's one set of cards taken care of. Got any fours? Go fish, sir. This suits me just fine. Got any queens? Go fish. I must apologize, sir. I am rather good at this game. <laughs> Have you tried the food here, sir? It's the best on the island, I can assure you. I can't get enough of it. Perhaps we could work out a deal regarding this lucky charm. <laughs> An interesting proposition, little fox. You know the name of my game. Yes, I do. It's Go Fish, sir. May I warn you that I made it to the state Go Fish Championship as a youngster. <laughs> Got any fours? Go Fish, Mr. Fox. I've always been lucky when it comes to Go Fish. I love this game. I win! All right. So, you won the captain's lucky charm back. Ask yourself, sir. If the charm is so lucky, why did I lose it? Because I'm a superior Go Fish player. That's why. <laughs> Gads, I like you, sir. Whenever you want to play Go Fish again with a Go Fish playing pig, I'm ready and waiting. So, Captain Drydock, I just had an interesting little game of Go Fish with that Mr. Big Pig at the cantina. And you'll never guess what happened. He cheated and ended up winning your lucky charm. No, actually, he lost and I won this. <laughs> My lucky charm, you found it, yes. Do you know what this means? I can go out on the sea again. The curse is lifted, thank you. Thank you. Charmed, I'm sure. Listen, uh, matey, if you ever need to use the SS Winter Prize, just let me know. I'll take you anywhere you need to go. Can't resist the call of the sea, can you? Even when it calls, collect. Let me grab my map and you can show me where you'd like to go. This looks like an ideal place to explore. Let's do it. I'll just keep the map here in case we need it later. Oh, it sounds just like a seashell out here. How about if we head back now? I hope you're not seasick, Fox. Okay, here we go. Not you again! How many times do I have to tell you? This is a private party, and without an invitation, you are not allowed to go on board. Sheesh! The nerve of some people. You'd think they would. Yay! Let me see that. Signed, Russian Blue. Oh, sir, we are ever so honored to have you on board with us today. Please, feel free to come and go as you wish. Why, thank you. How gracious of you. What a weasel. I trust you will have an enjoyable visit. And if there is any way in which I can kiss up some more, sir, I trust you will let me know. 
but of course. So, this is the deck party. Before I join the festivities, I should let Monkey Penny know I'm here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. How's the mission progressing? I just made it onto the SS Deadweight. I'm going to take a look around. Good. Keep your eyes peeled for clues as to where William the Kid's secret fortress is. If Kid's fortress is so secret, how come we know about it? We're spies, Spy Fox. It's our job to know. And we are good at our jobs. Spy Fox out. Do conductors have a favorite vegetable? Well, I've always liked a good beef. July 28th. It says shift change. What is this? A sound effects convention? Now that's a frog suit. Ideal for any amphibious occasion. A frog suit like this might come in handy, especially considering the worldwide dairy crisis at hand. I wonder what this gadget does. It looks like something Quack would come up with. It says, Timekeeper. I'll keep my extraordinarily sharp eyes open for clues, so I can find Kid's secret fortress. Pardon me, I'm looking for the restroom. This is the bridge. The head's down below. Actually, I need to go pretty bad, too. But of course, I'm not allowed to leave my post. The shift's over at two chickens and a car horn. Then my replacement shows up. Oh, well, hang on tight. I'm sure your relief will come soon, one way or another. I can gather information about the Sailor Watchman on the SS Deadweight with this. What's with that sailor on the bridge? Why is he so serious about guarding the SS Deadweight? He's a strange lad, all right. He only seems to care about making it to half the hour on time. He makes me nervous. Why is that? I thought he was going to bite my head off once when I tried to look at the maps on the bridge. It's top secret stuff, you know. Hello, you must be... Russian Blue. Noted the socialite and detractive owner of the SS Deadweight. The name's Fox. Spy Fox. What sort of business are you in, if I may ask? Oh, you nosy fox, you. As if I'd reveal my business secrets to you. Secrets, eh? You're very elusive, Miss Blue. Of course I'm elusive. I'm a shrewd business feline. Let's just say my business is international trade. Okay, but you've stirred my curiosity. What sort of cargo does the SS Deadweight carry? That's for me to know, Mr. Fox. As you can see, the SS Deadweight is a luxury liner. Let me luxuriate in peace. I understand. I can gather information about Russian Blue with this. What's with that guy on the bridge? Why is he so serious about guarding the SS Deadweight? Darling Fox, maybe you don't understand that I am an international business feline. My deals are not always made, shall we say, in a single location. I see. The SS Deadweight makes clandestine journeys from the island. Very interesting. I never said that, regardless of whether or not it's true.
Tell me about Russian Blue, maestro. She throws a party like none other, but it's strange when she rushes everyone off the ship so quickly. What do you mean? I never ask questions. I have a feeling she takes the SS Deadweight out to sea during the night. I see. Thank you, sir. Hey, that's confidential. You're not supposed to be looking at that. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I would never dream of doing anything like spying. I sure wish my shift would end so I could get out of here. I should have never drunk those 17 bottles of prune pop. I hate to disturb your work, but what can you tell me about Russian Blue? Russian Blue is my boss. I'm employed as a guard. Why? Oh, just curious. So, do you have any idea how long it is until two chickens and a car horn? No, they don't let us wear watches. At least, not until retirement. This must be an audio alarm clock. I wonder if there's a snooze button. It certainly can make a lot of alarming noises. I haven't heard so many interesting sounds since I ate that garbanzo bean burrito. That's not going to do me any good. What do you know about Ms. Russian Blue, if I may ask? We maintain a strictly professional relationship. She's my employer, you see? Yes, I realize that. Are you involved in her business dealings? Only in the sense that, by being a doorman, I know who's who. What do you know about the sailor up on the SS Deadweight Bridge? All I know is that he dashes off the ship as soon as his shift ends. I've heard him muttering about happy hour. Happy hour at the cantina, no doubt. If this clock keeps striking like this, I'm going to strike back. I haven't heard so many interesting sounds since I ate that garbanzo bean burrito. I'd hate to see the wristwatch version of this thing. What do you know about the sailor up there on the bridge of the SS Deadweight? He's a persnickety one. All right, I recall seeing him in the cantina. Ugh! The cantina, the horror of the cantina. I didn't realize you're so touchy. What do you know about Russian Blue, owner and operator of the opulent SS Deadweight? Ah. Yes, I believe she has associations with Nectar of the Goats. Just as I suspected.
do you know anything about that sailor on the bridge of the SS Deadweight? He guards that place as if his life depends on it. Oh, that guy's a weird one, all right. He's a regular at the cantina's happy hour. Hmm. What do you know about Russian Blue? Oh, she's upper crust. Very classy. On the surface, at least. I suspect she's in cahoots with William the Kid, but who am I to say? Interesting insight. What do you know about this sailor from the SS Deadweight? Oh, that Sal comes in every day straight from work. What time is that? He shows up here 31 minutes after the start of happy hour. Interesting. This seems to be some sort of a high-tech alarm clock. This could be helpful. After all, they say timing is everything. <laughs> That's it. That's the sound the sailor told me indicates the end of his shift. Didn't you hear the clock? What are you still doing here? I know. I heard it. I could leave now if only my replacement was here. Unless you're the guy. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I am your replacement. Consider yourself replaced. How can you be my relief if you're not wearing a sailor hat? Right. What was I thinking? There's no telling when I might need one of these hats. You'd better give me 40 of them. 40? But I only have one left. All right. I'll take one of them. Good. I hope you and your little hat will be happy together. Have a nice day. Okay, you can go now. Thank you. Out of my way. Coming through. When you gotta go, you gotta go. That's curious. The SS Deadweight made an unscheduled stop out in the middle of the ocean. This particular spot could require some further investigation. Let's see. It looks like the SS Deadweight went to 25 degrees latitude, 160 degrees longitude. Hmm, this looks interesting. Okay, here we go. Interesting. A pool of white water. I've never seen white water like this before. Wait a minute. It's milk. Dairy milk. And none too fresh, I might add. Now I'm a lean green swimming machine. 
Ah, yes, the underwater splendor of the Mediterranean. <laughs> I guess worms have a bit of frogophobia. Oh well, a fishing line like this could come in handy. Aha! That pipe must be where all the milk is coming from. What a terrible waste. I have to put a stop to this. Wouldn't you know it? Two nog dogs on mean looking robotic fish. I'm on you. You're trespassing in private waters. You're mine, intruder. Guess again, Tin Tuna. Yes, these worms are definitely frogophobic. Fishing is so addictive. One little nibble and you're hooked. The water is so... I wonder if... No doubt about it. This is one of William the Kid's demented pipe dreams. I should be careful. That milk may be piping hot. What's William the Kid trying to do? Create an... I can't go now. It looks like the other guard is coming back. I've got to find a way to get past these metallic mackerel. I should wait until the guard can't see me. I don't think I can just swim by those metallic mackerel. I don't think I can just swim by those metallic mackerel. I should wait until the guard can't see me. Might as well leave this here. Okay, I think I've seen enough for now. Good, because I haven't installed a bathroom on board yet. Okay, here we go. Thanks for letting me leave my frog suit on your boat, Captain Drydock. Please stand by. Hi, Spy Fox. Have you found William the Kid's secret fortress yet? Not yet. Have you been able to find any more clues on the Spy Corps computer? Not yet. Let's keep snooping around. I'm sure we'll find something. Fun. It appears to be a shoe. What is this gadget, Professor Quack? Oh, that's the night vision shoe. One of my most ingenious inventions. 
If you happen to find yourself in a dark place, all you do is strap the shoe onto your head, and then you can see in the dark. How illuminating. <laughs> yes, and it has excellent arch support. I've always wanted to go here. Alrighty then. We're on our way. A clever spy like me is always looking for a good line to use. I should wait until the guard can't see me. I can't go now. It looks like the other guard is coming back. Here goes. It's the dreaded Rear Admiral, also known as Spy Maneuver Number 41. Um. Huh? Must have hooked a big one. That fisherman will have quite a fish story to tell. Sometimes you need an extra line in this line of work. I hate to be the bearer of an underwater wedgie, but I've run out of options. Excuse me. Whoa! God! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned that one at spy camp. Ah, those were the days. Uh-oh, this steel door looks pretty thick, and I already used my laser toothbrush. I'll have to find another way in. A box of old airplane fuses. I'd hate to refuse a find like this. That's not going... The seat's missing. Maybe the pilot used it as a flotation device. Here's the jet's fuse panel, and there are some missing pieces. These spare fuses must fit into the... I'll bet this fuse won't refuse to work in this fuse box.
This'll teach him for not leaving a key under the welcome mat. I guess that guided missile was misguided. Of course, I planned that. I love a dramatic pause before blowing up giant steel doors leading to secret fortresses. I think I've discovered the entrance to William the Kid's secret fortress. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Hello, monkey. What's up? Bye, Fox. If I've told you once, I've told you a million times. It's Monkey Penny. Sorry. What do you want? I'm busy saving the world right now. Our informant, Mata Harry, has some important information for you. Where can I find Mata Harry? I'm not sure. All she said is that she's underwater and you'll treasure her disguise. Okay. I'll check it out. Spy Fox out. Welcome to William the Kid's secret volcano fortress. Please insert the electronic code box and answer today's passcode phrase. Hmm. The spy wanted to counter the remark with intelligence? That is not a valid response. Have a nice day. Answering that code phrase looks like it might end up being punishing. boat will sink at midnight. It looks like it already sunk to me. That's not the correct code phrase. I know, but it's the truth. Agent Fox, it's good to be working with you again. Mata Harry, what a fortunate surprise. What invaluable information nugget do you have for me? I intercepted this nectar of the goats thing, but I don't know what it is. It looks like it fits into some larger component. Can you use it? Are you kidding? I'll treasure this. Well, I gotta go. Go fishing, Agent Fox. Thanks for always sticking your neck out for me, Mata. You're a gem. like the electronic code box plugs into the panel of this voice-activated security system. Welcome to William the Kid's secret volcano fortress. My informant isn't there anymore. She's moved on to richer horizons. I'd better get back to the island of Acidophilus. Good idea. I'm almost out of sea rations. Darn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead! July 28th. You seem to have a gift for rhythm. You seem to have a gift for interrupting.
piranha. I wonder what a South American fish that can eat creatures alive has to do with making cheese. I have a feeling this is no ordinary feta factory. That door is still locked. I imagine that you get pretty busy during the tourist season. Actually, no. I wonder... Mmm, <laughs> it looks like a delicious snack. May I eat this, Professor Quack? Okay, that's the cheese and safe cracker kit. It will help you to get into almost any safe in the world. I won't explain exactly how it works, because it's very scientific and complicated. Trust me when I say it works like a charm. And it tastes great in soup. Yeah, and this paper isn't half bad. Here's where I... This looks like an ideal place to explore. Darn the torpedoes. Full speed ahead. Welcome to William the Kid's Secret Volcano Fortress. The doctor is losing her patience. This is correct. You may now enter the fortress at will. Have an even better day. Thank you. What a polite voice box. I'd better let Monkey Penny know I made it inside Kid's Secret Fortress. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox, I'm glad you checked in. How's it going? Smooth. As smooth as sandpaper underpants. I just got into Kid's Secret Fortress. Excellent. Now you've got to disarm that milky weapon of destruction. I'm in there like swimwear. Spy Fox, out. <laughs> Interesting. This looks like some sort of locker room for kids' evil minions. It's a secret passageway. What a clever secret entrance. William the Kid can go from the town square to his secret fortress anytime he wants. Grande... I wonder what this diagram is for. It looks strangely significant. Thank uh -huh. 
That thing is not only giving me the eye, it gave me the boot. I'd better look for a uniform. A yellow jumpsuit. I'll bet this is the official Nectar of the Goats uniform. No one would recognize me in one of these. This Nectar of the Goats jumpsuit might be just the thing I need to get the jump on William the Kid. Uh-oh, someone's coming. I'd better hide. So that's the dastardly William the Kid that everyone's so worked up about. Russian Blue, take this key wallet and put it back where it belongs. It contains the disarm key, the only thing that can stop my milky weapon of destruction. Right away, your Imperial Goatney. I've deposited the money in your bank account. Thanks for all your help. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Call me anytime. I need to get my hands on that key he mentioned. This looks exactly like that diagram over in the locker room. Now I need to move these levers to the positions shown in the diagram. This must be where William the Kid keeps his controls for the milky weapon of destruction. I should let Monkey Penny know I've made it here. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Spy Fox, good to hear from you. What's up? I'm in William the Kid's control room. The launching panel for the Milky Weapon of Destruction is right here. Great. Now, all you have to do is find the missing key and disarm that Milky Weapon of Destruction. Right. That shouldn't be too difficult. Spy Fox out. This must be some sort of tram to take people around in Kid's Fortress. There's Kid's giant milk carton. It looks like a billboard. been itching to take this jumpsuit off. I think whomever this belonged to had fleas. I'd better leave this door unlocked in case I need to get back in here later.
Is this coin really a spy gadget, Professor Quack? Ah, oh, that's the spy trap. Let me explain how it works. It looks like an ordinary coin, like you might find in the street. But if you need to trap three or more bad guys, the coin explodes and a net shoots out. It traps the naughty spy enemies. Nice, huh? Heads I win, tails they lose. I'm going to lose my appetite if I keep this up. What handsome cufflinks! Are they gadgets as well, Professor Quack? Those are the suction cufflinks. I am very proud of them. They are tiny suction cups that allow you to climb across non-porous metal surfaces. The perfect fashion accessory for the well-dressed spot. Mmm, that was a tasty one. Pudding. When this mission is accomplished, I'll pick up a shirt that... Usually, I wouldn't wear somebody else's clothes, but sometimes you have to walk on the wild side. There's one sound the ear can hear better than any other. The sound of falling money. They should get a tickle from this nickel. Sorry, folks. I'm on a mission. Oh, this must be Kid's secret volcano office. I should take a look around. No, no, no. I'm not coming out. The key I need is protected by these dangerous lasers. Let's see. The red laser connects with the red socket, and the blue laser connects to the blue socket. I wonder if moving these mirrors will redirect the lasers. The blue laser is still passing over the key. Whoops. 
If I don't redirect that blue laser, I'll never get my hands on that key. If I don't redirect that blue laser, I'll never get my hands on that key. That did the trick. Now I can grab the key wallet. I did it! I got the key! Now all I have to do is find that control panel to the Milky Weapon of Destruction. to do me any <laughs> Now, which key should I use? Of course, I can't disarm the Milky Weapon of Destruction until I put the key into this control panel. Of course, I can't disarm the Milky Weapon of Destruction until I put the key into this control panel. One of these keys is the key to my success. I hope this is the right key. Uh-oh, it looks like I got the wrong key. Of course, I can't disarm the Milky Weapon of Destruction until I put the key into this control panel. No need to keep this uniform on. Oh, Mr. Utterly, guess what I need to do again. Okay, okay, but do me a favor. Could you get me a pillow? The fanning is rough on the flank steak. Mr. Utterly has more guts than I realized. I guess every hero needs a uniform. This just isn't the one I pictured myself in. One of these keys is the key to my success. I hope this is the right key. <laughs> that did the trick. Once again, I've saved the world from a horrible 
or in this case, smelly fate. Now I need to go get that goat. Not so fast, my crafty friend. You may think you have outfoxed me by disarming my milky weapon of destruction, but I'm afraid it's too late to save your precious cows. It's over, Billy. Give yourself up. Don't ever call me Billy. It's William. And it's not over yet, my foxy nemesis. When I pull this lovely lever, the cow stables will become completely flooded with milk. And that will be the end of the dairy world as we know it. That's the most despicable thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Man, this is really rich. Kid, you're kidding yourself if you think I'm going to let you get away with this. It's too late. And now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Fox, I have a flight to catch on my giant metallic getaway blimp where I will implement my plan to take over the world, filling it with my delicious goat byproducts. Delicious? You must be insane. Insane, you say? You're the crazy one, if you think you can save the cows. Adios, Mr. Fox. And good luck finding this secret passageway to the stables. You'll need it. Stupid door. Thanks for leaving a little clue, kid. Now all I have to do is find that ascot. Kid's ascot. This must be the secret passageway to the stables where Kid is holding the cows. I'd better hurry. No need to keep this uniform on. Why don't you give me one order of chicken knuckles to go? It's your funeral, honey. It says, secret sauce. Do I dare be? You tell me, spy guy. Thank you. 
This uniform is a fashion nightmare. I should leave them the name of my tailor. That's not going to do me any good. That's not... This should be easy. Uh-oh. I can't swim past these alligators. They're looking at me like I'm bait. All right, let's see how the chicken knuckles seasoned with secret sauce affect the gators. Hey, the secret sauce is putting them to sleep. An alligator skin bridge. See you later, alligator. The kidnapped dairy cows. I've found them. Hang on, everyone. My name is Spy Fox, and I'll rescue you shortly. Continue treading milk, and I'll be right there. I hereby declare you free-range cows. But you're wrong. Go ahead. Free the cows this time. But I'll be back to milk the world yet again. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, kid. The last thing the world needs is another escaped goat. Think fast, Fox. This road ends just ahead. This'll eject me right onto Kid's Blimp. Yeah, yeah. Now that was an entrance. I'd better check in with Monkey Penny. Spy Fox to Mobile Command Center. Please stand by. Bye, Fox. Have you found William the Kid yet? I'm on his escape blimp now. Professor Quack says he can see you on the radar. Spy Fox, you can't let William the Kid get away. But what about the sequel? There are other supervillains out there. We'll be fine. That's true. What should I do when I nab him? We've already set up a mobile evil villain jail. Monkey Penny, do you have the coordinates for the evil villain jail? Yes. The coordinates are six degrees north, 26 degrees east. You need to fly the blimp over it. I'll transmit the coordinates to the spy watch in case you need to look at them again. Now I need to maneuver this ghastly blimp to that location. I'll get that dastardly villain. That must be the entrance to the front of Kid's diabolical blimp. Looks like someone didn't finish their lunch. Well, you never know when you might need a piece of stale rye bread. An electric screwdriver set. This could come in handy. You never know when you might need to drive some screws somewhere. This looks like some sort of conveyance between the front and the back of Kid's Blimp. <laughs> this
this reminds me of my high-flying days in the Spy Air Corps. I really need to get to the blimp's control room. be the control room for Kid's diabolical getaway blimp. A navigation panel. Now I can use the coordinates Monkey Penny sent me via the spy watch to maneuver this dastardly contraption over the evil villain jail. Then I can finally put William the Kid where he belongs. Now I just need to find a way to get Kid out of this blimp and into evil villain jail. Aha! The ejection seat controls must be here. I can finally throw Kid into evil villain jail. That did the trick. Hmm, what an interesting device. It's just like the toaster we have back at Spy Corps Cafeteria. A piece of rye bread might do the trick. My trap is set. I'd better hurry. What's going on? The blimp is changing course. Sorry, kid. I have a little errand I need to run. Hmm? What? Spy fox? I'm really getting tired of your meddling in my dairy domination plans. Yes, well, I do have a tendency to show up and ruin evil villains' schemes. I just thought I'd toast your accomplishment before you go. Go? What do you mean by that? Whoa! Too bad there was only one parachute. Ooh, that looked painful. I guess Kid will be serving up his goat byproducts in evil villain jail from now on. I would have gotten away with my evil plan if it weren't for that pesky spy fox. Spy fox! You'll pay for this. I'll be back. No jail can hold William the Kid. <sighs> Later that day. Walter Wireless here with our top story. Spy Fox has saved the dairy starved nations of the world from a near disastrous milk shortage. Today at the Capitol, the president is honoring Spy Fox as the nation's new hero. We now go live to the presidential press room where the ceremony is already in progress. For outstanding heroism and suaveness in the face of utter dairy chaos and for bringing the nefarious William the Kid to justice, I award you, Spy Fox, our nation's highest honor. May I present you with the Big Daddy Congressional Cookie of Justice. Why, thank you, Mr. President. It was a routine mission, really. Three cheers for Spy Fox. I've got my cookie. Has anyone got milk?